welcome to Classic Sitcoms, Facts, and Trivia. I appreciate you being here. Before we get going, I uh, ask you to please subscribe and please share these out on your Facebook page. Today's video is on scandals and secrets behind the Brady Bunch. Ooh. Let's see what it's about. Uh, Florence Henderson, Henderson had a risque sense of humor. Uh, the role of Carol would be something Henderson, who passed away in 2016, would be associated with for the remainder of her life. Um, Carol was ingrained in the imaginations of millions of viewers. In real life, Henderson was described as fun-loving and having a baldy sense of humor. She knew the respect that people had for that character. Lloyd Schwartz, son of Sherwood, said to Variety following her death, whenever anybody came up to her or would say anything about the show, she was warm as could be. I saw it a million times. Uh, Barry Williams took uh, Florence Henderson on a date. One particular rumor from the time on the set would haunt Henderson throughout her later life that she and Williams dated and had an affair. Williams, as the eldest son, Greg, was 16 at the time and Henderson was 36. Uh, in his 92 memoir, Growing Up Brady, Williams recalled having a crush on her. When those little things called hormones started kicking in, you get excited by even in inanimate objects. It wasn't that I sought to bed her, he writes. I just wanted to spend time with her. Henderson, a happily married mother of four at the time, humored her young co-star. But in sure things never progressed beyond being work colleagues. They did once go out for dinner, but were driven by William's older brother, as Williams was still without a driver's license. The whole thing with Barry got blown way out of proportion, Henderson wrote on the website of the rumor date. I guess in a sense it was a date because Barry thought it was, but of course I had no idea that his intentions were to date me, that it was made for a good story, though. Uh, Barry Williams and Maureen McCormick dated while playing brother and sister. Williams had more luck with on-screen sister Marsha in a 2008 memoir, Here's the Story, Surviving Marsha Brady and Finding My True Voice. McCormick wrote of dating Williams during filming, noting that at the time she said to herself, Oh my God, I'm kissing my brother. What am I doing? McCormick turned to drugs when the series ended. Only 14 when the series began airing, McCormick said she battled anxiety and personal insecurities due to playing sweet and wholesome Marcia. As a teenager, I had no idea that few people are everything they present to the outside world. Yet there I was, hiding the reality of my life behind the unreal perfection of Marsha Brady. No one suspected the fear that gnawed at me. Following the end of the series, McCormick Spears was still there, resulting in cocaine and quaalude abuse and depression. McCormick recalls drug binges at the Playboy Mansion, and even being so out of it, she blew an audition with Steven Spielberg for a role in Raiders of the Lost Ark. After getting clean in the mid-80s, she said she has come to terms uh, with and even feels acceptance of her Brady character. Barry Williams filmed an episode while he was high. Williams, like many teens in the 70s, admitted to experimenting with drugs. Except unlike most teens, the, the results didn't end up on television. Enjoying a day off from the set with friends, Williams said that he smoked some pot. Then the show's producers called in the middle of this high to go into work, Williams written counted. Uh, during a Brady Bunch convention talk in 2014. Though he regrets it, Williams said the results can be seen in a 1973 episode, Law and Disorder. I'm a much better actor than I'm completely sober than when I'm high. Uh, Susan Olsen and Mike Lookinland would make out in the doghouse. Cindy, the youngest member of the Bradys, was often chided for being a tattletale on the show, and in real life, Olsen spilled the beans to news.com.au in 2015 about life on the Brady set. When asked whether any of the kids hooked up during the filming, Olsen replied that she believed all of us did. We led a sheltered life for the most part of the year, so if there was anybody to crush on or try to date, it would be your counterparts. According to Susan Olsen, each young actor paired up with their opposite cast member on the show. So I had Mike, and we used to make out in the doghouse when we were nine. Eve always had a crush on Chris. They did kind of hook up later on, and of course there was Maureen and Barry. Uh, Robert Reed was a homosexual and in real life kept his sexuality a secret. As Mike Reed was level-headed patriarch of the Brady family, doling out words of wisdom with kindly tone and fatherly hugs at the ready. In real life, he, classically trained actor, was a homosexual who kept his private life under wraps. A uh, not uncommon occurrence at the time due to fears of the revelation would impact ongoing career success. 
Here he was, the perfect father of this wonderful little family, a perfect husband, Florence Henderson told ABC News. He was an unhappy person. I think had Bob not forced to live this double life, I think it would have been just uh, dissipated a lot of the anger and frustration. While many on the set knew of his life style away from the set, it was never discussed openly. I had a lot of compassion for him because I knew how he was suffering, Henderson said of Reed, adding that she believed coming out was not possibly due to the era that they were in. I don't believe the Brady Bunch would have existed at the time when the public knowing that Robert Reed was gay. I just don't think they would have bought it. Uh, Robert Reed disagreed with many of the storylines and did, didn't appear in the final episode. Robert Reed, who passed away in 92, after, uh, also clashed with producer Schwartz over storylines, and especially the visual gags written into each episode. Shakespearean trained uh, Reed preferred a more serious approach to storylines. Schwartz told ABC News, uh, though Schwartz believed Reed to be a good actor, he also felt he wound up on a show that he didn't want to do in the first place, and it became more and more difficult for him. Reed's displeasure with the scripts would continue throughout the entire series, culminating in his character being written out of what ultimately became the last episode of the original five-season run. The storyline dealt with Greg's impending graduation from high school and a prank that left his hair orange ahead of the big day. Reed believed the story uh, to be under par and reportedly demanded the episode be rewritten or he would not appear. The powers that be called his bluff and Mike's lines were divided between Carol and Alice, resulting in Reed's complete absence from the series finale. And that's all I got for you, you would think. With scandals and secrets, it would not be the Brady Bunch of all shows, right? But there was a bunch. Uh, there's even more than that that I did not get into. Uh, that maybe I'll get into later. I don't know. I, I, I've got to build up the courage to do that. Uh, that's all I got for you. Again, please subscribe if you have not yet. Please share these out. Don't forget, if you have not yet, please check out the Beverly Hillbillies Facts and Trivia and the Andy Griffith Show Facts and Trivia. Links are in the description below. Have a great day. God bless. I'll be praying for you.